Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Graham Anduri, and I'm here today to talk about singing to save the world. And uh, this is this is something that we are really passionate about. This is really at the foundation of what we do it at Sing for Your Lives. And uh, Stephanie's unfortunately today she's got a, a pretty gnarly migraine, so she's unable to be here. She really wanted to be, but uh, I'm sure she would appreciate any just if you sent her a message and said, hope you're doing better, hope you're feeling better, but she uh, she's unable to be here. So I'm gonna do this flying solo today. Uh, singing to save the world is something that we talk about all the time because, uh, and it sounds, I think it probably sounds to a lot of people like a really bold claim, like it's, it's almost uh, too bold to be true, but we have witnessed this time and time and time again. We've, we've seen this all around the world, literally. When we, uh, I went to a story that I tell all the time, when I went to Romania a number of years ago, I took a choir to go uh, tour through Romania. And the, the incredible division of, uh, the, di the dissolution of divisions that I saw there, the, you know, the boundaries that existed between languages and cultures and religious sects and uh, uh, socioeconomic divisions, all of that stuff that seemed so intense um, was all of a sudden just gone when, when we started to sing for people. We went to go sing at a prison. This was probably the biggest, uh, the biggest moment of this kind of dissolving divisions that we and creating connections that we that we witnessed was when we sang for a group of prison inmates and um and all of us going into this prison were you know we, we went in and it was this like really dark dank oppressive atmosphere and it was it was really quite scary actually um there was nobody between us and the inmates uh we didn't know what they were there for <laughs> we didn't know like if they were on death row or what was going on it was just us some concrete floor and then some these these really tough looking dudes and um as soon as we started singing, that that otherness, that separateness just started to melt away. And by the end of the concert, we were shaking hands and talking to each other and and laughing. And, and it was like there was no division at all. There was just we had just created these connections where none had existed and uh, got. I mean, there were so many stories on that trip alone, but we saw the same thing, the same type of thing happen when we were in Korea, when we've been in Germany and Austria and Italy, all throughout the United States and Greece. Um, we had, uh, you know, we had these experiences when we were in graduate school where we sang. We have a, a dear friend of ours from Africa who was studying with us. He created this African choir where uh, we, we sang all of these songs from all around different countries in Africa. And it was people from all over campus that came from different countries that all came together. Some were African, some were not. And they created this immense bond. Like we had this, we used to have what we called African family dinners every Friday because of this choir. Um, we've seen our students form incredible close knit family bonds by being in ensembles together, by being in choirs, or by being in chamber groups, or by doing operas together, or by being in a band together, and we could, I could go on and on about you know the the firsthand accounts that we've that we've experienced, that we've witnessed, that we've seen, where music has brought people together, where it has created those connections and dissolved divisions, so that you realize people start to realize that the shared humanity that we all have in common is so much more fundamental is so much more important than all of the perceived differences you know this like differences that we notice so immediately of skin color or you know political affiliation or sexual orientation or religion or all of these things that seem to create reasons for us to find separation um all of that stuff ceases to matter because when we start singing together, it's, there's some, there's like this, you know, there's a great line from a, a Waylon Jenny song that says, surrender to the mystery. Um, and it's talking about singing in harmony, surrender to the mystery. And there's something just mysterious and magical about singing together. We can study it all we want. And we do. We love researching, you know, what is this incredible magical effect that music has on us, especially singing. Um, there's something deep about 
the human voice that does something beyond what just instrumental music is able to accomplish. And it's this magical, mysterious sort of effect that it has over us that it gets to the core of who we are and it connects right with the core of who everybody else is. We can empathize with people. We can understand what their experience is. We can experience a new emotion that we've never had before. I mean, that's a, when we talk about a transformative experience when you're singing. It's when you go to, if you're an audience member, you go to a concert, you go to a performance and you feel some emotion that you've never experienced before, that you've never had real life and real life encounter with. That's, I mean, that's incredible that you can have that kind of a vicarious experience that opens your, your eyes, your emotional awareness to a whole new world of possibility that you didn't even know existed before. And I can't even tell you how many times I've been to performances where that was my experience, where I felt like I was, I went to go see my wife. Go, she sang uh, Swore Angelica, the title role in Swore Angelica. And I felt like uh, I was, I felt like I was a mother who had lost her child, which I, we didn't have kids yet. We weren't even together yet at that point. How that was not an experience that I could have had, but I felt so intimately what that must have felt like or being on stage. I, I wrote a big post about this several months ago about a, a character that I was playing that was a really evil character. And I had this immense sense of this moment of empathy with what his experience must have been that drove him to be this evil, violent character. And uh, we have this incredible opportunity to connect with people because we can understand them better. We understand that there is more that binds us than there is that separates us. And so that's the phrase I keep coming back to is that singing together creates connections and it dissolves divisions. Um, I love alliteration. You could also say it, it, it breaks boundaries maybe or something like that. But um, the thing that really that we've found that that works on a grand scale when we sing in groups, but it also works on an individual level when you are learning how to use your voice, when you are discovering what your voice really is capable of, you're just you're illuminating all of the things that are getting in the way of the full capacity of your voice, of that full freedom of your voice. And when you do that, when you see what's in the way and you get them out of the way, all of a sudden your your voice, your voice blows up. Your voice does things that you never knew it was capable of doing. But in, in that process of vocal discovery, you also are going through this parallel process of self-discovery. And oh my gosh, the, the instances where we have had students going through a vocal discovery breakthrough that all of a sudden they realize some new, huge, deep thing about themselves and about their life, the way that they have been holding themselves back in their lives. And then all of a sudden they realize, I don't have to do that. I don't have to hang on to that anymore. I can let go of that. Their voice is free, but then all of a sudden their spirit is free in a way that they had not ever experienced or hadn't experienced for a very long time. And so that's uh, that's why we talk about our, our way of teaching voice or this holistic process of teaching voice is called the transformative singing process because you literally are transforming, you are transforming your voice by doing this, but you are transforming yourself. And when you transform yourself, you have the capacity to transform the world around you. Um, you know, there's, there are all kinds of different ways of, of saying this. There was, you know, Gandhi has a famous quote where he says, be the change that you want to see in the world. And so rather than trying to change the world out there, become that change yourself. And then all of a sudden that inspires change around you. That inspires the way that you interact with other people. It inspires the way that, that other people interact with you. And so it kind of spreads like wildfire. When you become this transformed version of yourself, that, that kind of, that energy is, is uh, contagious. It, it spreads to the people that you come into contact with and they start to realize that they can, they can embody the same kind of change. And so <clears throat> when we when we sing for expression rather than singing to impress 
somebody with our amazing vocal technique, uh, which we call impeded singing, because you are still impeded by your ego, you're impeded by judgments, you're impeded by expectations of, that you have for yourself and that you think other people have of you. You're impeded by all these things that are actually holding back your voice from achieving its full potential. And in doing that, you're actually holding yourself back from achieving your full potential on stage and off the stage. But when you realize what those things are that are holding you back, you get them out of the way, you let go of them, you drop them on the sidewalk. And oh my gosh, the, the vocal discoveries that we've seen from students that we've worked with in the private studio, in classes, in workshops, in uh, training programs that we that we teach at and that we help to run, um, it's been it's been profound the transformations that we've witnessed and sometimes in just a single moment in a very you know in, in a single lesson in a single uh, workshop session sometimes it's sometimes it's that instantaneous sometimes it takes a little bit longer I've had some students that have been studying with me for years and years and they look back over the course of that time that they've been studying and they realize I am a different person than I used to be back then. And there wasn't necessarily like a, a massive shift that happened, but it was this over time, they, they gained this deeper understanding of why they do what they do and how learning to sing is actually learning how to live. And so that's, you know, we talk about voice lessons are actually life lessons in disguise. Um, and so transformation, transformation of, you know, we, when we talk about singing to save the world, well, you can't say, you can't go out and save the whole world just by singing a song at people. You got to start with you. The transformation starts with you. And so how can you, how can you go about that? Um, start becoming aware of what you are experiencing when you sing. Start becoming aware of what, what are the sensations that I am feeling right now when I sing? You know, what, am I feeling uh do i feel fear when i come up to this high note or do i feel the sense of release and em this emotional high point that i can express freely um am i feeling you know am i feeling tension in my jaw what is that coming from it's not coming from your jaw it's coming from something else usually uh what guiding what we do is we guide you through this process of learning to become aware of what you feel physically but then also what you feel emotionally what thoughts are occurring inside your head consciously and subconsciously those are the tough ones to become aware of but man oh man once you do once you can become aware of the 95 percent of this of the unconscious stuff that's going on uh then all of a sudden you are empowered to make huge shifts in your voice and huge shifts in your life huge shifts in your career in your relationships with people um the the implications are vast and so it's this is about so much more than just singing it's about so much more than just making pretty sound it's about way more than entertaining people which when we make music yeah it's entertainment we are like musicians are part of the entertainment industry um but entertaining gets and this is a this is something we talk about a lot too that entertainment actually is used the word is used incorrectly it's used to mean like a distraction a divertisement that you you kind of help people to forget their problems for a couple of hours while they're coming to listen to their music. I you know it's like playing a game on your phone. I do that so I can get my quick dopamine fix, so I don't have to think about all of the stressful things. But then as soon as it's done, it's like oh no, I still got to think about all that stuff. Music can do that for sure, uh, but it goes so far beyond just being entertainment. And entertainment actually means to bring people together. That's literally what the, the root of that word is two French words, entre and tenir. And it means basically that you are holding between two things. You are bringing things together and you are bringing that audience together in a shared reality. And when you are sharing a reality, a sense of what is in your space right now, that's when you make a connection with people. That's when you that's when you create bonds. And this has been, there are psychological studies about this exact thing. When you, when you have a sense of shared reality with another person or a group of people, then you have, you share this incredible, uh, strong family tribal kind of a bond. Now that's great at one level, but it also can mean like tribalism is not necessarily a great thing. We have this bond with these people, but those people are other we want to get rid of the otherness and recognize that, yeah, they're different, but that's awesome. 
that's not scary. That's not a bad thing. That's actually a really beautiful, good thing. And music is one of the best ways that we can do that because we get to we get to celebrate cultural differences and language differences and you know all of the all of the ways that a culture across the world is going to express their experience of their life it's going to be very different than the way that we do it on this side of the world uh and vice versa and so when we when we get to experience music from all of these different cultures we get to have a little like a glimpse into what it must be like to to live that existence and so we start to understand like ah that's still i can i can relate to that that's still a human experience that's that's not some crazy other thing they still experience love and fear and excitement and uh, remorse all of the all of the same things that i experience they experience with a different flavor with a different you know the language flavors it different their cultural experience flavors it different but that core human experience remains the same and so music is what allows us to really experience that at a deep, like a soul level, a fundamental level. Um, and so what we do with the people that people that work with us that learn how to do this transformative singing, that learn how to sing through the transformative singing process, is we guide you through your own vocal transformation. And in doing that, you just inevitably, inherently, you go through your own journey of self-discovery and self-transformation. And then once that happens, it's you can't help but start to create transformation in the world around you. And so singing to save the world is all about creating that transformation, starting with you, starting with your voice, and then building it out from there. Seeing how transforming your voice is going to transform the way that you think about your life, the way that you think about the way you exist in the world, the way you fit into society, the way that you can change the way that you fit into society and the way that you can affect change within the society that you live in. Um, so it's, it's, I can't stress to you how powerful this is. I am such a different person now than I was before I began really singing seriously. Um, I didn't start singing in a, in a, you know, in a real serious way until I was in college. Before that, I, I kind of would do it just because I like to sing with a band that I was in, but I was more interested in playing the guitar. Um, and once I really started to get deep into this whole, you know, training my voice, learning how to be a singer and realizing how much I was like shedding this shell of, of you know, these, these things that were holding me back before that I was afraid of looking stupid on stage. I was afraid of being a goofy and, and, being laughed at or whatever, I got rid of all that because I, that was what was called for. I had to be on stage and be a goofball. And then I realized it was actually a lot of fun and I got a laugh out of people and I got people to respond in a positive way when I would go all out on stage. And I, I have witnessed the same thing in so many of my students now too, that they, they just get, they crack open that shell and just toss it aside and they become these, this incredible new version of themselves when they learn how to sing, when they free their voice, they free their spirit, they become this, this fuller version. It's not that they are a new person, it's they're, they're becoming the person that they were always meant to be. They're just getting the impediments out of the way. That's really what, you know, when you're learning how to sing, you're not building your voice. It's not about building the technique and getting all of these building blocks to create something that was not there before. Your voice was always there. It always had the ability, the capacity to be this incredible expressive instrument. But we over our the hero, Allie Marsh said the hero's journey. Absolutely. She know we've talked in depth about the hero's journey already. Um, and Luis Winton said transforming lives through music therapy. This is healing the world. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Music therapy is, um, I mean, we are not music therapists ourselves because that's not what we trained ourselves to be, but it is so, uh, so in line with all of the things that we talk about. Um, if you're, you know, if you want to actually, if you want to go on YouTube, we have some, some panel discussions that we've done with some different music therapists talking about music that can, uh, to, that we can use music to help curb violence, that we can use music to heal traumas of uh, people that have gone through acts of violence. Um, 
we talked with a person, uh, a German music music therapist, who um, he's done an incredible study about how to not just um, curb violence, but to prevent violence in schools by mandating, not mandating, but by implementing music therapy in the school system, especially with students that are immigrating from other countries that don't speak the language. Uh, in that, in his case, that don't speak German fluently yet. So they get this when they can't speak the language of their peers, they can't express themselves. They can't, they can't express the things that are frustrating them. And so it builds up as rage and then it bursts out as violence. But when you have music that you can express yourself through, you don't need language anymore. You have this deeper, more immediate way of expressing the way that you feel and you can offload all of those intense emotions that would otherwise lead to violence. And this is one of our one of our huge goals that we have long term is to use music and to get music to be uh, a greater part of our education system again. It used to be, and then we started going through all these budget cuts several decades ago, and it's been sort of this ongoing struggle for music programs and arts programs to to maintain their place in our educational system because they kind of get seen as like their other their um, their other like add-ons to the real subjects to the core subjects that really matter and it's like enrichment is the term that gets used a lot and they're not they are not add-ons or enrichments they are fundamental to who we are as human beings we need to have that ability to express things in ways that words can't do in ways that math can't do in ways that you know science and engineering can't do obviously we have to have all of those stem subjects and all of that stuff but music and the arts are so crucial and fundamental um, for exactly what uh, what you're saying there, Louise, that transforming lives through music therapy and just music in general, being able to express yourself through music. We want to see that that gets back into the school system in a big way so that we can allow for we can create a, a way for people to express those pent up aggressive emotions in a way that creates beauty instead of a way that creates separation that creates violence that creates death honestly i mean we have here in the united states we have this epidemic over the last 20 almost 30 years now of gun violence in schools and in um not just in schools it's spread to all all different facets of our society and we are we are convinced that if there is a stronger musical educational component to the lives of everybody in our country in our world that those kinds of events just won't happen as much because people have a way to express themselves. They have a way to offload those emotions and reestablish that connection with their fellow human beings. When the only way that you can commit a violent act like that to actually go and hurt somebody and kill somebody is you have to you have to go through a process of dehumanizing that other person or that other group of people. You have to get to a point where they are so evil in your mind that they are no longer human. And music is the perfect antidote for that because it re-establishes our shared humanity. It re-establishes that connection with each other. And um, so that's that's a soapbox I could go on and on about forever, but uh, <clears throat> do whatever you can do to advocate for music in your, in your area, in your school system, in your community, um, advocate for the arts, advocate for arts education, for music education, join a choir, start a choir, um, support local choirs, you know, be a part of the solution here. But more importantly than all of that is recognizing that the transformation has to start with you and you can start that transformation by undergoing this process of trans, what we say, you know, what we do is the transformative singing process. How can you do that? Well, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, one of those ways is transformative singing boot camp. We have transformative singing boot camp that starts next week. Um, it's a it's a three day intensive where we go through this entire transformative singing process step by step. This is stuff that we have it's, we're, we have brand new material that we have never released before um, and that has not been in any of our course materials. And we're really excited to present all of this stuff because exactly what I've been talking about here today, because 
transformative singing as opposed to impeded singing. Impeded singing, remember, is when you're singing to impress somebody. You're singing to, you're coming from a place of either fear or of judgment or assumed judgment. Um, you're coming from a place of, I hope I don't screw this up or everybody come see how amazing I sound. You're trying to impress people with the sound of your voice rather than trying to move people with the emotion that is inherent in your voice. The focus is impeded singing. The focus is on you. Transformative singing, the focus is on the message. And we talked last week a lot about um, performance anxiety and stage fright. And this, this is the paradigm shift that we are talking about to get rid of that performance anxiety, shifting the focus off of you and your voice and the sound that you make and the technique that you have built up and shifting that focus to the message of the music that you are performing and shifting that focus to the emotional transformation that you can offer to people. Um, it transforms you, the performer, transforms the audience that hears it, and it inspires people to want to go out into the world and do something to make this place a little better for all of us. So if you want to know a, more about what that transformative singing boot camp is, I will go ahead and I'll put that link right here in the chat. Um, and there we go. Um, that, uh, like I said, it's a three day, it's a three day intensive Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. And, um, you can come to either the live sessions or the, and, or the recorded sessions. We will like, we record everything that we do. Um, and you can visit that website that I just posted in the comments to get all of the details about it and to sign up. Um, but that's going to be a really powerful way for you to experience this transformative singing process in a way that that not only frees your voice, because that's that's what we do. We're voice teachers. We help people uh, discover things that they never knew were even possible with their voices. But it's again, it goes so far beyond just the voice. It's all about transforming your voice to transform yourself when you transform yourself. And if you are a career singer, transforms your career. But then you have the ability in doing all of that to transform the world. You get to sing to save the world, quite literally. And that is our mission. That is what we aim to do. But we can't do it alone. Um, this is not a this is not a two person job or a ten person job. This is a job for everybody. For literally, we want to get the entire world to be involved in some kind of singing that is designed for changing changing their society, changing the world for a better, uh, in a better direction, changing things so that we get rid of those divisions, we dissolve those divisions, we create connections, we recognize our shared humanity again, and, uh, and we, we realize that there is nothing to fear in people that are different. There, is only things, there are only things that we can celebrate and then uh, invite them to to share in that shared humanity with us and recognize that connection themselves. So that's my that's my spiel for today. That's my soapbox. I would love to know for those of you who are watching live, what has been a transformative singing experience that you have had yourself? Why there maybe something that transformed you as a performer or as an audience member, or maybe it was something that you witnessed in somebody else. Maybe you saw that there was somebody else out there that had uh, a transformation that um, that occurred because of an incredible musical experience. Doug Webster. Oh my gosh, Doug, you're here. I, I got to say, so Doug is probably one of the most transformative singers I have had the privilege to know and to meet. He came and did a concert um, out here for us. Oh uh, gosh, when was that? Shortly before the world shut down and in, in, I think it was in 2019 or maybe it was even in 2020. And the ability, Doug, the ability for him to just hold the audience in the palm of his hand and guide you through this incredible transformative story. It's just a born storyteller. So uh, Doug, thank you for being who you are and doing what you do. You've been an immense inspiration. Um, that was one of my there's my transformative singing story. So <clears throat> anybody else that has one, I would love to hear it in the comments here. Luis says the pivotal point in my pivotal point in my career was when a nonverbal elderly man came to me after a concert and said, while you sang, I had no pain. Oh my gosh. So he went from nonverbal to being completely 
to being able to speak. That is, that's incredible. That reminds me, actually, I had a, a, a really amazing experience where I was at a, I was at a party. I was at a graduation party for uh, a good friend of mine and her uncle had um, pretty advanced Parkinson's disease and um, he would get stuck. He would had tremors pretty, pretty intensely and he would actually get stuck. His body would lock up while he was trying to do things. So he, he disappeared for a while and uh oh, where did uncle Joe go? He was locked up trying to walk out to the car. He was in the front yard and was stuck. We had to grab him and bring him back. Well, we handed him a guitar. He had been a singer songwriter in his earlier, earlier days, handed him a guitar. He started playing the guitar and singing these songs he had written 20 years earlier. And the tremors were gone. The, like he had complete control of his fingers. It was as if the Parkinson's was totally vanished. It was, it was like literally a magical transformation that we witnessed right before our eyes. So there's another, you know, another plug for music therapy. Um, so anyway, if you're watching this live, put those in the comments. If you're watching this as a replay, put them in the comments anyway, because let's keep this thread going. This is the kind of stuff that we need to remember why we do what we do. We need to remember that this is not just about, you know, entertaining a few people, that, entertaining the rich people for a little while while they come to our concert. This is about changing people's lives. This is about changing the world, quite literally. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep, you know, keep fighting the good fight and um, and let's let's make some great things happen together. Um, if you're if you're interested in learning more about that, that boot camp event next uh, next week, visit that uh, visit that link that I put in the comments or put a comment, you know, put a question in the comments right here and uh, we'll be happy to reach out and and get you all squared away. But we would love to see as many people there as possible so that we can start to really see some some transformative change from people that go out to sing not to impress but to express not to not to fear but to transform so um if i don't shut up now i'm going to just keep talking and talking so that's all i've got for today thank you all so much and um we'll see you out there next time bye